but how, how did the opportunity come about to begin with? Uh, um, I knew I had worked on a previous movie, which was Sinbad and the Art of Tiger, mm-hmm. and knew I knew people that were in the business. So when um, they were looking for someone big for a movie, my name was put forward, and consequently we went up for the interview, and, you know, the rest is history. So you only had one one audition in front of Mr. Lucas for the first Star Wars? That's right. Wow. About 20 minutes. So when you kind of developed the character of Chewbacca Mm -hmm. um, from the script, from your conversations with George Lucas, and from your own imagination, uh, how did that... How did that uh, characterization develop? What were your thoughts on who Chewbacca was? Mm, well, it, I think it, it was it was more of a challenge. When you mm-hmm. think about it, you you look at a drawing which is one dimensional, and how do you change that into a three dimensional character? Right. Um, knowing, sort of looking at the composition of the of the uh, of the character it was a bear it was intelligent and the only thing it couldn't do was humanly talk communicate with with everybody else but once the you know once the character was formed everybody seemed to know what Chewie was talking about yeah so he communicated in various grunts and growls and body language Right, and and very loyal to to Han Solo. Yeah, well, uh, you know, think about it. He owes his life to, according to certain people, he owes his life to Han. Um, uh-huh. Now, naturally, you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna uh, screw that really kind of relationship up. Right. How, how did you get along with uh, with Harrison Ford? Was there was Great. there a good camaraderie? Yes, there always was, and there still is today. Obviously, your life changed after Star Wars, mm-hmm. but but at what point did you realize that it had changed? Um, I think when all right, you get all the publicity and stuff, <coughs> and with the stuff with Star Wars, the. All the concentration was on the main characters, not the background characters. Mm-hmm. I mean, three POR two; those were the kind of with the three uh, with Harrison, Mark, and Carrie. Their, you know, their their um, their characters were all the publicity stuff. Chewie, R two, and three PO were background characters, basically. They were, the story, they were the storytellers. And it wasn't until Empire came out that uh, that, um, that the actual characters became part of that major group grouping rather than just background characters. Yeah. Empire, I'm, I'm curious to know because those first three films... Uh, obviously, George Lucas uh, directed the first one, and, and he, he, you know, he's the master of, uh, of all of them. He oversees yeah. all of them. He's the creator. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have different directors in Empire and Jedi. Yep. Did that make each project kind of a distinct experience unto itself? Well, I think you've only got to look at the movies. They are totally, totally different. Mm-hmm. Um, Empire was directed by Harvey Kirshner. Mm-hmm. who did a very, very good job on it. Um, he, you know, he and George worked together on it. Um, and having, you know, take the three directors. George was a man of very little uh, um, conversation. He knew what he wanted, and he could expl- explain to you how he wanted it to do to do it. Yeah. Kirsch, on the other hand, was the way I call it, was a show, was a show director. He'd show you what he wanted, and then he'd give you maybe twenty percent as an actor to use um, to get the best out of that particular character. Mm. And Richard and Richard Marquand was 
uh, an actor, uh, he was an actor before he became the director. Therefore, he knew what it was like to wear costumes. So he wanted to get them in, done, and out as quickly as possible. So, you know. And and for you as an actor, which which one do you feel more appreciative of? Which style were you more receptive? Um, learning from experience, I enjoyed um, Empire because of what Kirsch were, was able to impart to us. Mm-hmm. He it was almost like he knew what the character was as as much as we did, as much as I did. Yeah. Between the three movies, I'd, I'd like your take on it and the role of Chewbacca. Could you? Is there an arc that you can see? Is there a development that you can see that you can articulate to our audience? Well, there was a definite arc. Uh, there was a definite um, improvement. As I just said, the, he became a major character rather than a minor character as he was in Star Wars. Right. You know, it's like it's like the first chapters of a book. All your characters are there, and, and after the uh, during the first chapter, and during the second second, and consequently uh, other chapters, all those characters come out. Have to, mm-hmm. uh, will, will be come out if the author's, you know, if he if he if he knows what he's doing. Between movie geeks, I mean, all the, all the movie geeks that speak among each other, and I'm sure it's the same with all the fans you meet all all around the world. They probably all have their own opinion on their favorite of the series, but Empire is held in, in really uh, high is. regard. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and when you saw the actual film uh, for the first time, I'm wondering what your impressions were of it. I thought it was good. And, you know, it was it was up to the Star Wars standard or higher. Therefore, um, all that was was ever promised that it would be at the same at the same standard as uh, Star Wars at that particular time. Obviously, over the years, where they had, where they've made improvements, and uh, especially in Empire, opening up uh, Cloud City as against uh, you know right. as, a, as against a ball in the sky. If you take those, you know, when the, uh, in the main console. You take you take those windows out and you put outside it and it makes it a whole different world. Yeah. So it was improving all the time. Was there ner- was there a, a sense of nervousness about the second one because it being the middle chapter it was bound it, it, there was not uh, any kind of resolution and it was by it was darker it was a much darker. Oh, yeah, it had to be it had to become dark it had to be darker. Because of the threat from from the from the uh, dark side of the force, mm-hmm. so you know, and with the emperor, it's it's a battle against yeah. sort of the good guys against the bad guys. Well, I want I want to ask you about the fans, uh, real quick, because you've you've had interactions with countless fans. You're you're, you're very loyal to them, and you you attend all the all the conventions and the events and. Uh, Tell me about that family of, of fans and your experiences with them. There is, I, well, when you think about it, now, uh, for uh, for some time, you've had three generations of fans. Yeah. It's become a family, true family sci-fi film. Oh, the whole saga. Because the parent, the kids... Uh, the kids that went and saw the original on, have now become parents, so they are bringing their kids up in the same vein as as the, they that they went through, and it's it's interesting to watch the youngsters share the share the um, love of Star Wars. So it's something that the kids or the youngsters can share with their dads. Yeah, and that is family. That, that to me is family. And we see it weekend after weekend after weekend at every convention. The kids come up; they're two, three, four years old. 
They're dressed in either Jedi clothes or, or any of the characters. And they're loving it. They have a ball because they can play, they can be who they want to be, and they can do no wrong as far as their parents are concerned. Yeah. Do you think it's the the mythology aspect of it, the timeless characters? Or what, what do you think people well, have? It's, it's a fairy story. It's a fairy story brought up to modern day, and mm. it's got everything that a fairy story needs. There are no, bl- there's no blood, there's no gore or very little gore. You don't see, um, apart from, all right, Luke losing his hands, but that was a shot extremely well, you know. And uh, as I say, it's a fairy story that you can take your grandmother to, and you can take your baby. Uh, baby sibling too. Yeah, it's a great movie. All of them are great movies. Very much so. What, what were your t- because I know you're involved in in uh, the newer the newer Star Wars yes. too in the, in the Sith Revenge of the Sith. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, and and obviously George Lucas, you know, in the in the, uh, the 2005, he's working in a completely different. Uh, toy box than existed in '77. <laughs> yeah, of course he is. Of course he is. He and that is must not. have been a, a real different experience for you. It was great. It really was. You know, I got the phone call um, that they were going to do three, and that they needed, you know, they needed, they needed the character. Mm-hmm. Um, when you sort of when you look at the story, um, because. Chewie and Yoda, which brings in another character from Empire. Chewie and Yoda have been associating a long time, but it's never come to light that they are that they are part of the same uh, same band. Right. So Chewie has to be there to get Yoda to escape, so that can join up with Episode Four. You know, um, it was great to be able to go back and learn stuff that remember the first three were the ones that were uh, completely digital right and most of them were shot, were shot in uh, with CGI on them so that that's two things that it was it was remarkable to watch how the things were done and also to go back as I like to think the older professor at a university right someone someone that's been there done that got the got the t-shirt got the degree now comes back and is enamored by his students and that's what it was you know we walked into the studios everybody came up had a bit of nice to work with you blah 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 and stuff like this and it was just yeah. amazing to be able to do something like that but I also have a little story um, they're out there and I'm waiting on a, on something and suddenly there's a knock on the door and a door opens and there is Count Dooku Mm. It was it was Christopher Lee. He'd come back to the studios in in Australia, and he came over in his famous voice and said, "Hello, my name is Christopher Lee." How are you? <laughs> and that absolutely made that movie for me. Oh, I bet he was he was, uh, he was one of my heroes. Right? Oh, he's a legend. Yeah, absolutely. he's a legend, and he's a fabulous guy. Really, and having going back a little bit. Having met, I like having met and worked with Alec Guinness, who was another one of my heroes. Yeah. Having met two heroes in a lifetime, that to me was just mm, yes. Yeah, so I can imagine. It, it was just a fabulous uh, re- thing to come back and be involved in episode three. It you know it really something. It was unexpected. Um, but it was there, you know. It was it was great. Did you find that uh, that a different mis- a different George Lucas? Uh, nope. Has he changed at all? Nah, he's just got older. 
Yeah. Um, oh, um, everybody, everybody, because we're around about the same age, you've all grown up and you've all got older. So it's like meeting an old college friend after 20 years. Mm-hmm. Because you're the same person, otherwise you wouldn't be, still be friends with them. So, you know, I, we, you know, George hasn't changed. He's still got the philosophy. He's still a wonderful, wonderful person. And he's just, just, mm, indescribable, really. Yeah. Yeah, and he hasn't changed in, in, not, uh, not, um, not that much. Obviously, everybody changes, but George doesn't change that much. Well, when you watch these films, um, can you ever? Because I, I know you're always bombarded with questions, and and and, and fans want to hear from you, and and so your your Star Wars is a constant part of your life and your conversation. But when you watch the films now, uh, after mm-hmm. you know thirty years. Can do you still? Can you watch it as a, a viewer? Can you separate yourself from the experience? Oh sure, yeah, you had. Yeah. It was a it was a job. It was part of it was a job that was extremely. How can I put it? It was a it was a job that um, was extremely intricate at the time. But now you come back and you watch it and you go, hmm, yes, I'm glad I did it that way rather than doing it any other way. Yeah. You know, you, you just go and you watch it. And so, sometimes I'll watch, you know, if, we, if we're, uh, we have to, if we have time from being on the road, I'll sit down and watch it, you know, purely just to remember, just to refresh your memory.